Thank you for staying with us. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. And right now it's time for our hot topic. Well, this one, we're discussing the need for government to fix prices of goods. And our guest today is Bolaon Olujede. He's a public affairs analyst. And we'll just be making sense of this. Good morning, Mr. Bolaon. Thank you for joining us. Uh, good morning. Nice to be on the program. Thank you so much. It's good to have you. It's good to have you here. All right, so we're talking about the need for government to fix the prices of good. And I'm sure, as you're aware, um, Femi Falano had you know, approached the court talking about the, the prices of goods for you know, certain items. And he actually you know, quoted some things from the Constitution that some of these things need to be fixed ASAP by the government. But let's just have your thoughts on this before we dive right in. Okay, I, I think Mr. Falano um, has good intentions. I believe the judge as well. Uh, both of them are legal people. Mm -hmm. So you have this tendency to see everything from your point or from a legal perspective. You, mm -hmm. you see a problem. Um, you are also concerned. You want to provide a solution. So you deploy the tool that you are familiar and comfortable with, which is the law. Um, that is what I have seen uh, Mr. Falano and the judge do. Uh, but is this a solution? Even in communist China, as a matter of fact, we must ask questions. Why are we at this junction? Have we done this before? Yes, we have. We did it, we did it uh, several years ago when our people were even queuing up for milk and sugar and all of that. Price fixing doesn't work. It doesn't help anybody. Even in the um, eventually what that created was a huge hold of accountability. Yeah, it gave back to what we call the subsidy of, of, of several years. A slippery slope that we must avoid. Rather than thinking of fixing prices, we have to think of more innovative uh, ways of intervening in the prevailing problem that the country is facing. Uh, price fixing doesn't work. Okay, I was even going to, I was about to ask, how practical is this? Because if the government, ha you know, has to fix the prices of certain goods, so let's take for instance, rice, gari, sugar, milk, bicycle and its purpose, vehicles as well. Those were the, some of the things that uh, Mr. Falano listed in his suit. Um, if the government starts to fix these prices, how does that even help you know, the, the, the suppliers of these product, products? Because if the government fixes the prices, that means regardless of how much I bought them, regardless of what the, the dollar is saying right now, regardless of the rent I have to pay, regardless of everything you know, that, that sums up to the price that I am actually asking people to pay for this thing, that means I might just be at a loss. If the government, because most times the government might even fix something that is, you know, lower to what I actually paid to acquire this good. So how practical is this for the government to even decide to, to fix these prices? It's absolutely impracticable. I mean, you are bringing out the ridiculous side of that, uh, that direction now, yeah. uh, or that judgment. Um, how much I will sell my item should depend on my cost profile. You don't determine my cross profile for me. You don't know how I've been able to build it up. So how can you determine how much I just, I just sell it? It's, it's, it's almost ridiculous in the, in the real sense of it. So, um, so you have to fix different prices for different states, I believe. Mm. And within a state, you also have to fix different prices for different locations within the state. Because the cost of living yeah. in Lagos Island or on Victoria Island is not the same. And the cost profile of providers in Victoria Island is not the same as that of Egbeda or that of uh, uh, other parts of Lagos. So you will not only be determining the prices in, the, in Nigeria, you will determine the prices by state, then you will come to the state level and determine it by local government, possibly by location within okay. even local governments. You know, so it, 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 it's a ridiculous suggestion. I believe, like I started with, that the intentions are good, but we need to look at other kind of intervention that is possible and that can help us 
in the situation in which we have found ourselves. You have a situation in which dollar prices, not, not the exchange rate is very volatile. It means that at every instance that these fluctuations are happening, you also need to recalibrate those prices. This is a country that is heavily dependent on imports. So as you are importing, as dollar exchange rate is changing, your price, your cost profile is changing, and government must continue to recalibrate to ensure that we can have those prices. It, it is absolutely unrealistic. Absolutely. <clears throat> yeah, I, rem I remember the... At the time of Buhari's first coming, we had this price control, and army, the army people will enter the, the market, and then things were sold at ridiculously um, low prices and all that. And I was just looking at this uh, judgment and saying, are we going back there? But we have the price control board. In the face of this hardship Nigeria is facing, what role can this price control board play without necessarily infringing on uh, the, the rights of people and uh, making the businesses uh, of people go down the way they sh it should not go down. So what kind of role can the Price Control Board play at this juncture to make Nigeria's, uh, Nigerians' lives better? Um, I, I will say maybe their role should be restricted to uh, issues around fleecing. Uh, they could... They could look for those circumstances that appear as if uh, uh, the, the, the business people are fleecing or necessarily taking advantage of the people um, in, the, in the way they price their goods. And they can intervene. But you see, a, a, a very beautiful uh, intervention in a prolonged you know, situation like this is in the agricultural space. Now, when farmers have produced, this is what happens most of the times uh, in harvest season. So you see a product in very massive quantities and the prices very cheap. In those instances, let's use grain as an example. An intervention could be that when those products are out and are very cheap, corn, for example, which is maize, could be as low as 100,000 naira per ton uh when when it is uh in those kind of seasons now farmers could even take losses in those seasons because there's a gloss so government can step into that space and buy and begin to buy when it is buying it will help to show up the prices to a certain extent that the farmer can make profit and is delighted to go back to the farm and farm again now when the products becomes scarce, like you see maize has become very expensive. By the time you start getting to March, April, by May, it's almost unaffordable. The government will go into its uh, silos and release and begin to release some of this maize that it has bought in September when it was cheap. And it will release it to bring down the prices onto a certain particular pedestal. When, when these where grains are released, nobody is getting free. Well, on, just you a said? moment. When these grains are released, who will they be released to? Because how are, how are you putting it into the market? How? Yes, I'm not talking of the kind of release that we have now. This one is a palliative kind of release. It is free. I'm talking of, a, of a, 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 an intervention in which those maids, they will be bought in the first instance when they are extremely cheap and you want the price to come up a little bit so that farmers can make profit and they will be delighted to go back to the farm and farm again and when the prices become so exorbitant that consumers are suffering then you begin to sell into the market what you're essentially doing is you're increasing the supply in the market and it will automatically have a price effect on the on on on, on, on the, on, the uh, on those items so the price will go down because you are flooding the market until you achieve a particular price level that you believe is, is, is the target that you are going to. So this, these are the kind of intervention that we can look at, um, not the fixing of uh, I'm, I'm just, I'm just I just ask this because government doesn't have a shop or something. So um, <clears throat> are they still going to give government to their political cronies, uh, those people that they gave palliatives to, to take to the market? How, how is it going to be? How, how is this going to flood the market such that uh, the price comes down? Who will take it to the market? Will it be the governors that will be given to give to the people free of charge? Or how will it get to the market? 
government doesn't own a shop well uh, as far as palliative is concerned um it, which i mean it does it doesn't follow the normal economic rules of course you have to give it to the governors and at the level of the governors you have to now have structures with which you can get this across to the people the interesting thing is if we are serious if we are if the motive is altruistic if we really want to do this we can do it because there are structures there are structures around the local government there's the local government there are structures that ride on the back of religious organizations who are, by the way, already involved in one form or the other in distributing palliatives. So if we're serious, the truth is that we can get it down to the people who need it. But you and I know how some of these things will work out. If people who don't need it will corner these things and they will, you know, Thanks, the people who really need it. You might even get into funny markets and some people will start to sell it. Mm. It is part of what we have seen in this country. That's but it perfect. is not because it is impossible. It is just because our people, um, <laughs> I, 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 I don't want to impose <laughs> our people, but what we have <laughs> seen know, in the We past, know what you're struggling you know. to say. So leave it there. We, we understand. But um, you said interventions and you, you've mentioned quite a few, but would just like to know, uh, these alternative interventions that can be done instead of uh, this price control that is being muted right now? Okay, um, we need to intervene in certain critical areas. If you look, apart from fill, if you look at the majority of the other goods that were mentioned in that judgment, they were things that we eat. Yeah. Mm. So, it is, it's been said over and over again, though I'm, I'm delighted that government is also now beginning to sing the same song. Hopefully we will take it beyond song and make it into reality. And that is the fact that food inflation is a major component of our inflation, composite inflation figure. Mm. If we solve food problem, right now that inflation is about 28 point something, or let's even say 29. Food inflation alone is over 30. Yeah. So that shows that it's a critical driver of the cost of living in the society. If we can do, do something about food, then we will help to moderate the, the inflation, the general inflation figure in the economy. So what are those things that will help us deal with insecurity matters? There are very huge agricultural states in Nigeria today that insecurity have chased people away from the farm. Kaduna, Plateau, yeah. Bainway, all those, all those states that I mentioned, they are heavy farming societies, heavy in agrarian uh, 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 economy. But then, a lot of things are affecting them, so they're not able to produce as they're supposed to produce. We also have issues around connecting inter, you know, centers of production with the markets. The infrastructure that does this, we should pay attention to it. We've been talking since July about putting an additional 500,000 hectares of arable land into agriculture. Have we done it? How many of these 500,000 hectares have we put into agriculture? If you, if in that July that the president uh, made that speech, if maize has entered ground or cowpea or whatever, we will have had maybe even maybe even two two seasons of some of this product. It will have been in the market. So taking those things, you see, we are good at analyzing Nigeria's problem, and most of these problems we know them. But to take the specific action and move away from just the analysis into the doing, the place of doing, is where we have a problem. Five hundred thousand, if it is one thousand, one hundred thousand hectares. Now, we've been able to put into cultivation since that speech was made. It will have been still started to make a difference today. So, action is, is the real thing. We know the problems. Hello? Yeah. It's, it's, Hello? Can okay. you hear me? Okay, we can hear yeah. you now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, so I mean, we've, we've heard all of the initiatives that, that you've said, um, but my question now is, how do we move forward? Because, fine, we can have all of these ideas, but what are like, the first few steps that the government can start to put in place? Because, like we say, 
Nigerians are really suffering. And you have also pointed out the fact that food inflation is actually about 33%. Um, with the um, general inflation rate about, I think, 28.92 there about. So what are the f practical steps that we can start to take now? Um, and can people help the government? Because at this point, it seems like the government, <laughs> the government has hands are tied and there, there's so much they can do. And maybe they are not able to pull their weights based on some certain setbacks and, um, you know. But let's just, let's just hear your thoughts. What can we do? What can we do to help the government? And what are the first few steps we can take for us to, I mean, see the prices become fair? Okay, um, of, of course, some of the things we can do in the immediate will be, will be to deploy these palliatives effectively. Now, do you think, do you think that will be said, done? Oh. Do you think that will be done? That, do you think that will be done? You, 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 no, let, let, let me go back to part of what you said. Part of what you said is that the people should also help. Mm -hmm. Who are the people that are cornering this? I've never seen a governor sharing bags of rice by himself. Mm. So we give it to our people to help to deploy these things. Okay. And in the process of all of that, we start to see all sort of stealing and, you know, denying the real people who need this thing from getting them. We've, in this country, a situation in which politicians are putting their own name and wanted to use the palliative for their own birthday as a gift. You know, th these are the kind of things that makes all this palliative ineffective. Government has said, oh, release. So maybe eventually there will be a release. By the time you now see deployment of what has been released, you start seeing situations in which an entire family is being given uh, two derricas of, uh, <laughs> of, uh, of a Gary. Uh, People like us might not even get any. <laughs> some might not even get any. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, if only we have done it the right way, it, might, it will get to the real people who need it the most, and they will get something that will cushion the immediate pains that they are feeling. Mm -hmm. Now, beyond the immediate, which is just palliative, we now need to think of what we will do for the medium term. Yeah. What will help us to sustain uh, things? Uh, I believe we're very working very hard at the issue of exchange rates. Uh, when uh, the country is at at a, at a junction where it doesn't even have 2.4 or 2.2 billion dollars to pay the outstanding uh, uh, obligations that are on the CBN window, so it shows how critical the issues are. But like the CBN governor said, um, we are putting our steps in the right direction, and hopefully we'll begin to see uh, certain results from that. And why is that important? Because we are still a heavily dependent economy. A lot of things that we consume in Nigeria are still imported. Right. So we need to deal with that because of uh, 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 the exchange rate. Now we need to produce inside. A lot of, I saw, I saw the other time I saw, oh, the bread, the bakers were protesting and it was in maybe Plateau or something. I'm saying, look, in Plateau, we can plant wheat, but we are not planting wheat. We are protesting that the price of wheat has increased. The price is not our product now. We are bringing it in. If your dollar exchange rate has gone south, I mean, your naira has gone south, obviously the price will go up. It is not within the control of you know uh, uh, the market force. I mean, the market forces will determine that. So can we begin to produce more? There are a lot of things we have been blessed with. We have arable land, we have water, and we can put it to use. Meanwhile, we are busy importing food from countries who do not have 10% of what we have. Let's make better use of what we have, and we can do this over a medium term. Come to think of it, 500,000 hectares of land, 500,000, if it is maize, 1, hectares into it will show up somewhere along the line. Let's yeah. come into the space of doing and move away from the talking. All right. I love that. I mean, I think that's a very good way to land it. Let's come away from the space of, you know, talking. Let's start doing what is necessary. Um, anyways, want to say thank you for coming here and sharing insights on this topic. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank mm -hmm. you so much. All right. I've been speaking to... Bolahon Olojede is a public affairs analyst and we've been talking about how um, well they've told the federal government that they need to fix the prices which some people say it's not very practical but we'll see.
we'll go on a short break when we return we'll be looking at our next hot topic so please stay with us <laughs>